Welcome to Music She Missed, the podcast where I try to get my best friend caught up in some of the most popular songs and artists that impact our lives. I'm Allison. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I missed all the music. And Rachel, we are here to introduce you to another secret artist that you probably never heard of. Never heard of. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't know why, but I have. Never heard of it. So every week I like to think of some weird question to ask you to... You do a good job at it. Thanks. Uh, To segue into the discussion. And for some reason, I don't figure out who it is even through the question. Well, they're pretty vague usually. Yeah. I try to keep it secret for as long as possible. (laughs) So my question for you this week Uh is, what are your thoughts on poetry? Oh, I like poetry. You do? Do you have any favorite... Poets? Well, of course, William Shakespeare. Like, I think I was back in high school, and so this was a while ago. Um, I was probably one of my favorite classes in high school. It was my William Shakespeare class, and it was the whole entire semester on um, William Shakespeare. And Sonnets. Then, and, yeah. Okay. And then when, you know, my family and I were in London, um, just being able to go to um, his playhouse and mm-hmm. just really learn about him. The globe. And, Yes, and learn more about him. And, like, even now with my daughter, who is five, Mm -hmm. um, trying to teach her some of this stuff and um, finding some books that are even, like, broken. Romeo and Juliet for tots. Yes, exactly. No, I found some books (laughs) for her. It's so disturbing. No, it's how they um, deliver it. It's pretty cool. So has William Shakespeare's work been turned into music? What does this have to do with? (laughs) Okay, please tell me. Well, Shakespeare doesn't really have anything to do oh, with this okay. artist. That's just the poet that you like. But this week's artist has worked with a modern poet to create uh, one of his albums. Modern poet? Yeah. But he has um, all types of albums. I have no idea who you're talking about. Please reveal. I know. Okay. All right. Well, let's do, do the drum roll. Let's do the drum roll. Uh, let's also invite our audience to do the drum roll with us. I yeah. think it would be cute. Drum have along fun. with us, guys. Here, Here we, we go. go. Ready? It's Ben Folds. Five? Yes. Ish. Yeah. So is it called Ben Folds Five? So Ben Folds is the is the man. Oh. And Ben Folds Five is the band. Okay. So I've heard of him. How? How have you heard of him and not Jimi Hendrix? I think I bought a CD once, but I never took the off the plastic. Oh and I think it's still in the plastic <laughs> in my closet. And you I spent know. like $15 on a CD and you didn't even take it out of the plastic? This was like back when I was in high school or college. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> there's actually not only that CD, there's other CDs that I just, I don't know why I would buy them. And you don't know, happen to know what album it was, do you? I feel like I had a red cover on it. Oh. Was it the unauthorized biography of Reinhold Messner? I don't know. (laughs) Again, I bought it, and then I didn't open it, and it's still in the plastic wrap. Okay, so um, we're going to learn about Ben Folds 5 and Ben Folds. I don't know. So he's not the poet. No. Well, unless you consider a lyricist a poet. Mm, I consider him as an artist. Okay. So what do you know about Ben Folds? Um, It's a guy. Mm, Yes. He has about five friends. He actually has, <laughs> there's only three of them in Ben Folds 5. It's a misleading title. So there's not five of them? No, there's three. Oh, so why isn't he called Ben Folds 3? That doesn't sound as good. But it's honest. Uh, he's a drummer? No. No. Um, a pop singer? Not really. I wouldn't call it pop. Okay. Then maybe like, no. Well, that... I mean like pop-ish, but. Okay. No. Okay. That's about it. We have reached the end of your knowledge of Ben Folds. Yes. And it doesn't take very long. Well, let me, I'll throw some songs at you just to check and see. Maybe you have heard them and you just didn't know. Okay. That you've heard them. Um, Rock in the Suburbs. Pass. Song for the Dumped. Pass. You Don't Know Me. Uh, I, I feel like maybe I do, but I don't. No, pass. <laughs> you don't know him. Uh, the Luckiest. Pass. Pass. Really? Yeah. Okay, last one. This is the most famous. Mm Mm-hmm. Brick. Pass. She's a brick and I'm drowning slowly. I'm only thinking of Brick House. (laughs) Isn't that like in the 80s? 70s. 70s. 
Yeah, no. Isn't that how it goes? It's like really <laughs> high. Um, I don't know what. I don't I even know who think, sings that song. You're thinking of like she's a brick. Yeah. House. Yeah, no, totally different. But isn't that high pitched? No, uh, no, I don't know. I don't, think I don't so. even know who sings that song. It's the Commodores. Oh, okay, well, I don't know who they are. So, Rachel, on a scale of one to ten, where would you rate your current knowledge of Ben Folds? Two. A two? No, one. <laughs> nah. Well, uh, I mean, you knew that he was a guy. Like, you knew he was a musician. Uh, yeah, but I don't know any of his music, so I'm going to go back to one. <laughs> but I have a CD, and it's in the plastic wrap. I should rack. give you, a, like, half a point at least. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I didn't open it. But I still own it, like, even now, like, 20 years later. Maybe 30. Go digital. So, um, <laughs> you've got some homework. I do. I've made a playlist for you of Ben Folds. And I, I've got to tell you, the reason I chose this artist, he's not in, like, the giant names, like, you know, Michael Jackson or Jimi Hendrix, some of the other artists that we've talked about in the past. But he's one of my personal favorites. Oh, fun. So I wanted to kind of, in season three, introduce an artist. I mean, he's still a big name, but not, like, massive. Like, I don't blame you for not being familiar. Okay. Does that make sense? No, that makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. So I made a playlist for you of some of his more popular songs and some of my favorite songs. And I just want you to listen to it every day for a week. And then we'll come back next week and talk about it. Sounds good. Let's do it. Here we go. Are you excited? Uh, yeah. He's one of my favorites. You should be yes, excited. Yes, I'm excited. I just, well, like, I'm nervous that I never opened the CD. So I'm like, will I, what was the reason back then that I didn't open the CD? Maybe I don't, mm. I'm not going to like them or, but, so maybe I should open the CD too. Well, you can start with the playlist and then if you like it, open the <laughs> CD and put it in your car. <laughs> yeah. Okay, audience, we'll be back with you in just a moment, and Rachel, see you next week. Here we go. Welcome back. Rachel, you spent the last week listening to Ben Folds and the Ben Folds 5. I have. How was it? I honestly not sure. Like, <laughs> okay, I did my homework. You know, I was a very good little student. I listened every each, day, every day, okay. and then even like I think it was like halfway through the week, I got to the point where I was actually starting to memorize the lyrics. Wow, I know. And then I was like, oh, I was cooking or cleaning or you know doing something around the house, and I would be like, da 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 da, Kate, da 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 da, Kate, <laughs> and it was You're just, just shouting, like, Kate. Yeah, and, and Paul's like. <laughs> What? What do you want? My name's Paul. And I'm like, no, I'm, you know, whatever. And so um, I kind of got into the groove, but I'm still not sure if I like him or not. And so I'm really hoping this conversation helps. Okay. That's very interesting. Um, let's start with just a little bit of history. Yeah, go for it. I want to know about him. Is So wait a second. I'm thinking he's from the East Coast because he talks about, and I think the song Landed, mm -hmm. that he's like, flying to the west coast so i'm thinking if he's flying there he's from the east coast is he, that right he actually is he was born in 1966 in north carolina 66 yeah 66 that mm -hmm. means he's like in his he's almost 50 yeah or he's 50 he's so wait a second some of his music though was it done like within the past five years yeah he's been recording since the 90s oh wow i thought he would okay he sounds really young then. Yeah, he does have a he, really... He like, sounds like he's in his like 23 or 24. Well, he was in his mid-20s, you know, 66 to 96. Yeah, so he would have been in like his mid-20s in the beginning. Okay, what music was in the beginning then? Um, Philosophy, I think, is the earliest song on the playlist. Ah, yeah, I liked Philosophy. Yeah, I do too. It's a fun song that really shows off his piano skills. Yes. Which... I Just, actually really had fun listening to that one because I have a um, a micro baby grind in my house. I am aware. And um, I'm trying to teach my little one, but she has way too many ants in her pants. She's just <laughs> not there yet. But, you know, I'll get onto the piano and play. My husband will get onto the piano and play. And I actually took some time after kind of halfway through the week and I started transposing just what I heard from what he was doing with philosophy and just sort of. Figuring out the beginning part. 
Cool. It was fun. Well, that's actually how Ben learned the piano when he was nine is when he started. So your daughter has plenty of time to become a Yeah, she's piano only five. <laughs> virtuoso. But he was listening to like the great pianists like Elton John and Billy Joel. And he was ah, listening to their I heard, music. I heard Billy Joel and him. Yes, exactly. Those are big inspirations because he would take their songs and learn them by ear on huh. the piano. Really? So that's how he got started. Yeah. And he plays several instruments. He plays piano. He plays bass, drums. I mean, he's multi Very talented. talented. And he did go to um, University of Miami School of Music, but he never actually graduated from there. You know, I actually know that about Nora Jones. She went yes. to a college in Texas. Renowned for its music school. Yeah, and she never graduated either. I don't know why I know that. but I, I think it's because a lot of music schools want to, like, claim, like, this person went yeah. to this school. I think it's because she was in that one movie with that guy... <laughs> I think that's my only fact I know about her. <laughs> so, um, so Ben was in a lot of different bands, but Ben Folds Five was founded in 1994. Okay. And um, there are two other guys in Ben Folds Five, as we talked about in the first half. Um, Darren Jesse, who plays drums, and Robert Sledge, who plays bass. Are they good friends, or how did he meet them? Uh, yeah, they met in college. You know, oh, just, okay. We met like, in college. We did. <laughs> um, like-minded musicians, you know. Okay. And um, their biggest album was Whatever and Ever, Amen. And uh, that's the one that has Brick on it. Ah. So, and they were together for um, those three albums. And then they broke up. Why did they break up? Did Bands someone die? Break up. No. <laughs> well, you've been shocking me through season one, two, three. No. That people die. No, uh, Ben just went and he did his own solo stuff. Okay. Um, including a uh, acapella album. <gasps> and like that one song that I liked. I um, put one of the songs from that album, Still Fighting It. Yes. Uh, and we'll talk about that. But Ben Folds 5 did get back together. Really? A few years ago and they were... Ple uh, like a few years ago, like a few years ago. Yes, like within the last five years. And they released an album called uh, The Sound of the Life of the Mind. Was any of these songs on from there? Yes, Do It Anyway, which has a great music video huh. with the characters from Fraggle Rock. I was kind of back and forth on that specific song. You should watch the music video. It would cheer you up. It's super cute. I remember Fraggle Rock from <laughs> when we were kids. <laughs> But yeah, so um, since then, um, he's collaborated with a bunch of other artists, like, and it's okay if you don't know who they are. Uh, Regina Spector. Pass. <laughs> Weird Al. Oh, my father-in-law <laughs> likes him. Yeah. And even William Shatner, and he's worked with Oh, symphonies. that's the Star Trek guy. Correct. Um, he's worked with symphonies. He does a lot of, like, classical stuff. He's yeah. been a judge on a singing show called The Sing-Off. Never he's, heard of it. Me neither. But he's done a lot of things in huh. his career musically. So he's in his 50s now. Early, early. Early Maybe, 50s. Yeah. But still, he sounds like he's in his 20s. <laughs> he huh. has a young voice. He does. So kind of want to go back to... Um, some of the songs, some of the specific songs. Well, no, just some of the backgrounds of he started piano at nine mm -hmm. who got him into piano was it a family member? his dad brought a, a piano home oh that's mm -hmm. sweet of him um so i have a couple questions sure i want to kind of go back to when you were talking to me about ben fold of ben folds folds with the s Z. okay ben folds <laughs> <laughs> yeah multiple folds he can play the piano yes. bass yeah. drums yes. But I was kind of hearing some other instruments. Okay. Was I right? Because definitely, I, I think there is one song that I didn't like, and you—it's not a piano; it's a synthesizer. Can you tell me what song it is? The uh, Sasuke um, Hamilton. Sasuke Hamilton. Yes. You don't like that song. No. Oh, I like. I that tried, song. and it was a pass, pass, pass. I don't think you tried very hard. No, I did. <laughs> I did try. I tried seven okay. days in a row for an hour. <laughs> okay, so Sasuke Hamilton, you're right. He's not playing the piano in that song. He is playing a synthesizer, um, and lots of the other songs have other instruments. 
he also is really into classical music. Um, his newest album even has like a little concerto at the end that's all strings. He incorporates, you know, horns, everything. He yeah. incorporates a lot of like symphony sounds and classical sounds into his music. So, um, but Saskia Hamilton isn't like that. That is more hard. Yeah. And more rocking, I guess. And, and, and that's, I don't know why. I just, no, I do know why. I just didn't like it. I didn't like <laughs> can we talk the about sound, and I just didn't like it. Can we, can we talk yeah, about it? Yeah, go for it. So that the album that Saskia Hamilton is from, um, the other song in your playlist is called From Above. That one was on that album as well. It's called Lonely Avenue, and it's a collaboration with um, writer Nick Hornby. He's really famous for writing... Um, Wait a second. I thought High Fidelity. Ben Folds. Yes wrote all of his uh, music. He, yeah, he does. Like but the he songs that you heard in th from that album. In this particular album, okay. it's a collaboration with Nick Hornby. Okay. And Nick Hornby wrote all the lyrics and then gave them to Ben and Ben wrote the music. And Saskia Hamilton, if you just look at the lyrics, it's a love song about Saskia Hamilton, who's a real person. Yeah. But the song describes the love as only for the sound of her name. Right. Yes. And for me, as somebody who's studied languages, right? True. The song like <laughs> she's got two sibilants, no bilabial plosives, <laughs> to me just makes me giggle. Like lyrically, it's very interesting. But when Ben took his, um, and I could see that in you, especially just you know, like I like that Billy Joel um, with the history so song and right. So it so the lyrics have a like special history. draw to me. But here's what's interesting about it: it's because you didn't like it. So when Ben took his song um, and gave it back to Nick to say, this is what I'm thinking, Nick didn't like it either. See? I have company. Because for him, it's like the name is beautiful. The song is like a love song. Uh, and he felt that what Ben had written was too... Hard. Yeah, discordant. Yes. But Ben was writing it from the point of view of like a young boy. It's like a song about a crush, right? Yeah. So... He's writing it from the perspective not of Saskia, who has this kind of poetic nature, but rather the kid. And they later found out that Saskia Hamilton, as a young person, was in a punk band. And so it kind of brought it like full, full circle. circle and made it made sense to huh. both of them. And they were like, OK, OK, yes. let's go for it. Yeah, let's produce it. Huh. Still doesn't make me like the song. Oh. Sorry. I still don't like the sound <laughs> of the synthesizer. I just don't like that instrument anyways, so. Okay. Um, any other songs you didn't like? Well, talk to me about his musical style. I'm oh. thinking pop, classical rock, because yep, you were talking yep, about, yep. so you would say it's all of it, or what yeah. would you fall him into? So, piano rock is one way you could describe okay. it. Okay. You could say singer-songwriter, um, and sometimes you could say classical. I mean... I, w huh. I would say piano rock would be the main yeah. thing, but because he's produced a lot of different kinds of music, I don't think that he's an artist that you can put into just one category. Okay, cool. Does that sound... That sounds about right, because okay. I was going to think piano rock, especially as I was continuing to listen to him, and he kind of just, that Billy Joel sound kind of came out. Yeah, and you're you're picking up on that. Exactly. That is a major influence. And I want to let you know, like, before season one, I would not be able to say any of those words. <laughs> and I'm just, like, amazed that those came. Like, I could relate to one musical artist to another. Yeah. Picking out a, oh, my gosh. It's um, kind of fun, isn't musical it? Musical styles. Wow. The farther we go, the more you're going to be able to do it. I know. What are we going to do? People are going to have to go back and listen to the <laughs> earlier seasons. <laughs> so talk to me about the song Brick. Okay. So are we moving to songs that you like? Uh, I'm just kind of going through my questions that I'm okay. thinking of. Yeah, let's like, talk about Brick. Brick, I mean, this is This the... is a song that's sad. Yeah. It is a, like... Like, my heart went out to him. Like, I wanted to give him a hug. And yeah. so... what? So what is your question about this song? What's this song about? Especially when, now that I have found someone, I'm feeling more alone. It sounds like this young relationship... Mm-hmm male-female relationship that have just had this some type of event, like a car accident. Yeah. Like, maybe they killed someone in a car accident. You're not or far off. like, death or something like that. So, yeah, you um, definitely picked up on the tone. 
Um, this song, he he purposefully left it vague, but eventually did tell what the song is about. Oh, like in a public? Yeah, like in a concert or something. Gotcha. Um, and he actually didn't even write the chorus. The um, the bassist huh. did that. She's a brick and she's drowning slowly. Um, and this song is about his high school girlfriend who had an abortion. Oh. And so you're picking up on, on the really sad tones. And when he wrote the song, I have a quote here. He said, I didn't really want to write this song from any kind of political standpoint or to make a statement. I just wanted to reflect what it feels like. Yeah. So anyone who's gone through that before, then you'll know what the song's about. And so I think that it speaks to him the skill of his songwriting for you to feel the sadness yeah and the heartbreak of that story and becoming a little song. bit more one with him as a person yeah and feeling his emotions to a point where he's not just this man that has instruments in his hands it's mm -hmm. he has a heart he has a life he has yeah. a world and he's inviting you into his world which is a, just a very intimate um, in, invitation yeah, it is. It is. It's just a. It's a really sad song. And of all the songs, for it to be the hit. Yeah. It's really. That, oh wait. So this is their number one song. This is the song that everybody knows by Ben Folds. Really. Yeah. It's the only one I think that came anywhere close to topping the charts in the U.S. Really. Mm-hmm. The song about abortion. Yeah. But, I mean, like you said, it wasn't super obvious yeah. to everyone, right? It was just something that was just very You can sad. connect with it, though, Yeah. Even if you don't have that particular experience. Yeah. I still think that it... Well, you don't... I don't think... Within the lyrics of what it's happening, it's it's a definitely um, person A, person B. Mm -hmm. But when they're dealing with the, such of the same thing, like a car accident or an abortion, it's a loss, it's a loss of a death or um, something like that. Like, um, you know, eventually our parents will pass away and yeah. eventually um, our, the siblings that are left will have to deal with that loss. Mm -hmm. will deal with that loss and they're going through it in a different way. When, for example, her, she's, she's a brick. She's just falling and it's slow. Well, for him, he's just, he thought he found someone, and now he's not. Yeah. Found her. It's kind of a bummer. It is. Shall we move on? Shall we? Okay. Let's talk. Well, <laughs> I, I want to let you know that I did put hit that song into a like. So oh, okay. the bummerness of the song didn't stop me from liking it. That's very interesting. So I like that part. So uh, what other songs do you want to talk about? So I liked Brick, but I also want to talk about Luckiest. Ah, this song. This song. <laughs> so I like the smooth um, piano to it. Mm -hmm. um, but the delivery of the lyrics. What do you mean? Like, in my opinion, mm -hmm. again, I'm still learning about music. Okay. I'm still learning about blah, 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 blah. I just felt like how he was singing it, mm -hmm. he was singing it with too much air. So you, it wasn't that you didn't like the style it was the actual like his voice in the song that you didn't care for exactly it wasn't like the lyrics it wasn't the piano it was how he delivered it okay i mean it's my I preference don't, i that's totally fine you are allowed to have your preference i don't have that personal complaint about the song and a lot of people like the song in fact just for grins i went on facebook and i was like how many of my friends got engaged or married to this song and i had like seven people in an hour be like me my brother me 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 like huh. this song is uh, and I've never heard the song until this week. I don't know even how that's possible. I mean, I've, I've been like, to gone so to many weddings. weddings. I've been like a bridesmaid in 13 weddings. And not one of them walked down the aisle to the I list. don't know. <laughs> you probably, maybe they did and you just weren't paying attention. Of course I was not paying attention. Because I think we have like mutual friends who Of course we have mutual friends and gotten song. engaged or gotten married. And we've been... Yeah. And weddings together. It's just... And this, I, the song like lyrically is a beautiful picture of love and a really poetic it is. picture of love in my opinion and i did like this song okay so but just not the, the way he sang it not the way he sang it so okay. i'm wondering if there's someone else there like if it was covered or something like that i bet it was i'm sure people have covered it i'm sure another song that i really liked was still fighting it so let me clarify just for our listeners that oh. the still fighting it that you heard is not the original song from Rock in the Suburbs. 
Really? It is an a cappella version. Okay. On an album that he released, I think in 2009, of all a cappella covers of his music from universities across the country. Wow. So you. Is that popular? Well, what do you mean? Well, I've really missed him that much. That yes, no, you All have. these universities across the United States have know who he is. Well, yeah. I'm so sad. <laughs> but but <laughs> this, this album, it's called Ben Folds Presents University A Cappella. That's cool. And a lot of the songs that you heard um, on the playlist, like Brick and You Don't Know Me, Landed, um, he's covered those songs and it's just a really interesting take it shows his musicality and creativity yeah um and it's a the original song is also very nice but i chose that one from the acapella list because i wanted to give you a little different taste hands down it was probably one of my favorite songs out of the playlist that you created for me i liked it um the lyrics the music the delivery of the acapella all Mm -hmm. of it like bam 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 it was like yeah you should check out the acapella album then. I really want to. I think you would really like it. I think I will. I think, yeah. Let's put that on my to-do list. <laughs> okay. Is, is there a reason why you were drawn to that song? I feel like I may have heard that song before. I don't think so. Well, I think one of the things that I like about Ben Fold is even from... Folds. Oh, gosh. I can't get that. <laughs> ben Folds. <laughs> Like, even with Brick, he's talking about his emotional, this invitation to step into this emotional thing. Okay. Same thing with Still Fighting It. He's he's inviting you in to step into this emotional thing as he's watching his son yeah. just go through something that he dealt with before. And, yeah, 20, 30 years later, he's still fighting it. And I really like that part where even for me, that... I teach kids and and I can see talking with some of the parents um, they're like yeah I had the same problem I had that same problem I was like yeah I even said it to one of the parents still fighting it oh, that's so funny. <laughs> and she's like Ben Folds and I was like yes really <laughs> yes she started wow. saying I was like well have you heard of uh, music she missed and I was like, she was like <laughs> and so then I just got into that conversation but it was really cute um I like teaching swim lessons to kids and it's fun that is awesome way to go that cool mom yeah but yeah so Ben wrote that song um for his son about the pain of growing up That's and really it sucks cool. to grow up and you know um I also have a child. Yes. And I sing. I've been singing that song <laughs> to him That's all cute. week. You know, like when I get him up from his crib, yeah. I'm like, good morning, son. You know, like That's cute. singing that to him. Cause... So is he becoming like a, a morning person? Because I know you're not a morning person. Babies are morning people. Yeah. My, my Me baby not wasn't. So much. I had an odd baby. She slept till nine. It was wow. weird. Anyways, moving on. Um, Kate. I liked it. Yeah, you were shouting it. Shouting it. Some of the lyrics I didn't prefer, but I overall liked the um, the song. That I, is one of my personal favorites. Really? And it's from Whatever and Ever, Amen, which I think is the best album. Huh. Little story about me. Yeah. That album was the first non-Beatles album really? that I ever got. And it was because a boy in high school that I had a crush on. A boy recommended that album to me and so of course you had, had to, to get, get it, it. and <laughs> it's it therefore has like a certain sentimental charm yeah. for me but I find it still to be very listenable even now yeah. like I still enjoy it and Kate is a song that I still enjoy and because um because he's from North Carolina a lot of the lyrics in Kate are very weird there's that one line, down by the Rosemary and Cameron, she hands out the Bhagavad Gita, right? Do huh. you remember that line? No. Yes, wait. Yes, I remember that line. <laughs> so that line to me was complete nonsense until college when I went to go visit a friend who lived in North Carolina, and she was like, here, here's Rosemary and Cameron Street. You know, like in that Ben Fold song, Kate? And I was like, oh! oh. <laughs> and then it kind of... Clicked. Clicked, and it made me enjoy the song even more. That's cute. I like that. I like that. So are there... Another song that I liked was Annie Waits. Okay. It's just a fun song. It is a fun one. Um, Philosophy. I know we talked a little bit about that. 
um, and You Don't Know Me, another one. I just, I liked it. Cool. So there's parts that I liked about Ben Folds. Okay. I'm getting the S. There we go. <laughs> um, but there's also stuff that I didn't like, too. Okay. Um, you know, we talked about Saski Hamilton. Didn't like her. Right. Um, that, that song because of the synthesizer. Mm-hmm. But Phone in the Pool, mm-hmm. I didn't like the sound of it. But the okay. lyrics made me question something. Okay. That if I was going to like it um, or not. But by the end of the week of just listening it, to it, like, continuously for seven days yeah i just i was by the end of this week i was cool with the song but it didn't make me Never. overall like it mm-hmm. it just made me not want to push the skip button you know he actually did throw his phone in a pool huh that is a true story true story yeah <laughs> with me with a pool in my backyard i don't <laughs> think i will ever don't do throw that your phone <laughs> yeah <in a> pool. <laughs> um so one of the songs that was kind of like in the middle of the road okay. was Rocking the Suburbs. All right. From the album Rocking the Suburbs. Yes. I liked the beat. It was fun at first, but at the very end, it was just too much rock. And I think... You we, mean like kind of heavy? Yeah. Sound? Yeah. Okay. That that heaviness and and the just the F-bombs. I'm just not the biggest fan of the F-bomb words. Right. So. I had a... I did have a little fear um, that you wouldn't like... Ben Folds music because he does curse in it. But I do want to talk about this song. This is the other kind of big hit out of huh. the Ben Folds songs. It is a catchy um, sound. It is catchy. But here's the thing that's interesting about this song. It's not like stylist. It's stylistically unlike most of his other yeah, music. Yeah, I could tell. You could tell. And the reason is because this song is like a satire. Uh huh. So he's not. I can like, see that. He's making fun. Yes. Of a music genre of the time in the late '90s called new metal. Okay. The band that he like that you could most closely like connect with it is um, Limp Biscuit. I don't know who that is, but I've heard maybe heard that. You probably yeah maybe I mean maybe bad music from the '90s. So bad music. <laughs> wait wait. Like bad boys or just bad? Just like not good. Not good in my okay. opinion. So um, he, the the thing was during this time, most people got their music from the radio. I mean, now we have Spotify. We have all these different ways. We can listen to anything we want at any time we want. I only listen to what you give me. So. I know. But in <laughs> 1999, we would have been severely limited in doing this show. <laughs> Because most of the things we use for it didn't exist. <laughs> but the other thing was that, you know, if you liked a certain kind of music and you listened to the radio, yeah. there would be songs that, like, were bad. And there wasn't anything you could do you about just had to it. You just to had it. to listen to it, right? But you why to, would like, they get airtime? Because they're popular. So, like, he's kind of saying, like, this is... Why is this popular? Like, he's kind of, like, ragging on... The popularity of this kind of music which he doesn't like and he's relating it to living in the suburbs right because it's like it's the kind of music that like middle class teenagers living in the suburbs would listen, listen to, to. Gotcha. <laughs> exactly gotcha gotcha yeah um i can see that um but still the too much rock at the end right yeah. But that's what he's that's why he's like I got to and he's yeah. kind of like growling into the microphone. Yes. Yeah, he he's doing that because of he's making fun of that genre. Yes. But yeah. it is kind of catchy. I agree. Another thing I want to mention about Rocking of the Suburbs is mm-hmm. the instruments that make that sound. Mhm. What is instru- what instrument is that? So I don't know if oh the like Wee! Yes. Okay. I don't know. I looked in the um, track notes to try to see if there were any unusual instruments, and there uh-huh. weren't. So, but I do know that what Ben told his producers to do for that song uh-huh. was to overproduce it. Put all the effects digitally, change his voice, change the guitars to overproduce it so that it would sound like one of these crappy popular songs. Uh. And so probably what you're hearing is like over effects on a guitar or a bass or... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. And what is he, like, he talks about in the lyrics, I think it's like verse one, two, and three, mm-hmm. not in the chorus, but he mentions Michael Jackson. He does. John Bon Jovi. Yep. And Quiet Riot. Yes. I don't know who Quiet Riot is. They sing, um, but come what are they, on, 
What are Come they? on, feel the noise. But why is he mentioning like I... the the artist that he chooses in those lyrics are totally arbitrary. In fact, oh. when he plays the song live, he'll change them out and put in different ones. Oh, he's just saying like all of these bands are better than this stuff that I'm satirizing. Oh, uh, gotcha. So another song that was kind of middle of the road mm -hmm. um, for me was the song for the dumped. That's such a fun song. I thought I was going to hate it at first, though. Yeah. And that's why I kind of didn't want to put the... it liked or disliked. But by the end of the week, I put the song kind of in the middle because the sound was a bit harder and the lyrics were harder. Yeah. And I still like the emotions displayed in the sound and the lyrics. Like, if you've been dumped. Yes. The song speaks to you. It's the, yeah, it's exactly. It's yeah. like, it's still about... It's angry. It's yeah. an angry song. It's an angry song, or for an example, it's like Brick or I'm um, Still Fighting. It's he's he's sharing his heart, and I'm like, way to go, Ben Folds. You're sharing yeah. your heart. You're, sh you're inviting someone to say, you know what? I hate being dumped. This sucks. Yeah, give me back my black T-shirt. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> when I was in high school, I loved this album so much, I'd drive around listening to it, especially this song. And one night with a couple girlfriends, we were, like, driving in the dark, and we were rocking out to this song. I was rocking out so hard, I like wasn't paying attention. And I drove my car onto a curb. Oh my so gosh, you're a really good driver, though. And that's kind of <laughs> odd. I wasn't when hear. I was 16. And, you uh, were a slow driver, too. Oh my gosh. Probably because I ran my car onto a curb when I was 16. <laughs> well, I've done other stuff, too, but you still drive like a grandma. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> At least your son's all safe in, in the backseat. <laughs> I also have received zero tickets, so... Yeah, I've gotten three speeding tickets in one week. <laughs> Ouch! And there's an essential difference between us. <laughs> so, we've talked a lot about Ben. We've got his history, we've got his music, you've shared your likes and dislikes. Here is the question. we got to rate it on a scale of, like, 1 to 10, 1 being garbage, 10 being awesome, and maybe, like, 6 or 7 means you're going to open up that CD that's still shrink-wrapped <laughs> in your attic. Where would you rate Ben Folds? I still don't know. You have to. The show I know is I have to. The show is ending, so I'm going to say eight. Whoa! Are you I know. serious? Well, I think as we continue to talk, Ben Folds really does a great job of inviting you into the intimacy of his heart. And I like that in I like that in him. I like that in people. Hmm. I, I'm like that. You know, I'm not a very hide your emotions kind of person. And neither is he. And neither He's is super he. Super transparent. So I, I feel that intimacy connection with this guy that I'm struggling with putting an S on his last name. <laughs> well, I am like so shocked. I really I really am surprised, well, and pleasantly so, because uh, I do love this artist. He's one of the only ones I've ever seen live of like, all the artists that we've really? done. Yeah. Like, I, I like his piano, though. And yeah. his, he has a good voice other than that airy one. <laughs> <laughs> and that acapella part, that was cool. Well, then, okay, with that score of an eight, you got to check out the acapella album. you got to check it out. i got to open that one CD stuff. that I bought. you got to like... open that one and tell me which one it is when you figure it out. Rachel, I'm so glad you had a good week listening to Ben Folds. It was a fun week. I'm super excited. If you, our audience, want to follow along with Rachel's journey, um, you can check out all our playlists on Spotify by searching for Spotify colon user colon music she miss. Also, please uh, rate us and subscribe on iTunes and like us and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Yes. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much. Have a great week. See you next time. Bye. Bye.